Hey, Facebook sisters, Flying Free sisters on Facebook. This is Natalie Hoffman with FlyingFreeNow.com. And as I have promised, I am doing a Monday morning live video for you. And I'm going to be sharing a little bit about my personal life. And then I'm going to answer one of your questions which came in. Okay, so here we go. We are in my office today. And I promised last week that I would show you my office. So I'm going to turn the camera around. And I, by the way, I was very tempted to clean my office first and I decided, nope, I'm showing them exactly the way it is. Okay, so let me turn my phone around. All right, this is my office because I have a whole bunch of kids that live here and I don't have any more off, <laughs> I don't have any office space. So I'm gonna show you, actually, I have to, okay, hold on a second. So this is the stairway coming down to our basement, okay? So you get, the, yes, don't you like the lights? That's Tom, that's my husband. He likes that kind of thing. All right, this is the bottom of the stairway, okay? That is my, that's my office. It's not really my office, so I don't spend too much of my time here. That is a pile of books, and this has to do with what I'm doing right now. I'm working on a page of resources for kids. Those are my children's books that I read to my kids over and over and over again. Well, I have a lot more than that, but these are the ones that have to do with um, just helping them to deal with their emotions and deal with problem behaviors from other people and helping them to be more um, kind to others and the, all of that kind of stuff. Okay. And so I'm going to, that's what I'm working on. That's my, that's that, that's my calendar of all the, um, this keeps track of all of the podcast episodes and who, who's doing what and when. And then this is, so this is so that I can walk and work at the same time. So I get exercise, so I don't have to sit down all the time. But I do have this chair here if I need to sit down. And then this is where I record. And that's actually where I spend most of my time. Can you hear my little pony in the background? My kids are watching my little pony. Okay. And I have to put all of those signs up. Do they work? Do they work at keeping kids out when the door's shut? No, they do not. They do not work. This is a storage closet. All right, it's very small, as you can see. Whoops, that's my heater on the floor. It's a very small storage closet. And that's the back of my whiteboard. And this is where I make my videos. So I have it set up so it looks really nice. It looks, I mean, I can't, I don't like the color of the walls, but I'm not ready to paint. So um, this is where I record. So it's really tiny in here. That's my, this is my new um, whiteboard that I use to teach people in the flying hire group. And then these are my lights so that I have light on my face because there's no windows in here. There's no, all we have is that like orange light. And then that's my fake tree. This is a painting that Megan Cox painted for me. She's the founder of Give Her Wings. This is an original Megan Cox you can buy this painting on Redbubble. Not the original, but um, the original is, is mine only. And it's my favorite thing in the whole wide world. And um, she has a whole bunch of other paintings. You can buy prints and stuff. I love to buy her paintings for gifts for people, um, prints and things, because they're just so powerful. All right. This, that's my podcasting mic. And this is just what I'm working So this is the first... This is the first book I'm recommending in my little page of recommendations. I was thinking about doing little mini videos where I kind of show people what the inside of the book is and talk about it just a little bit. And I thought that would be more fun than just like words. Okay, so I'm going to turn this around now because I think that's about, that's it. It's not that exciting. All right, hold on a second. Let me turn this around. Okay, here we are again. All right, so that's my home office. What I'm reading this week, I've got four books going this week, but um, I'm reading um, I'm reading How to Be Anti-Racist, and I can't pronounce his name. I'm reading White Fragility by Robin D'Angelo, and I'm reading a book called Ninja Selling, which is a book for realtors, but I'm learning a ton about life in that book. And I'm also, I just finished a book, and I'm listening to all of the, well, not all of them on Audible, three of them are on Audible. Um, and then I just finished a book called Go Giver, which is another business book. But again, it's more about life than business. So um, 
what I'm doing this week is having conversations with my black friends about race. That's what I'm interested in right now. It's what a lot of people are interested in and I want to learn more. Um, I already told you what I'm working on. So today, my job today is to work on this resource page and record little mini videos. Um, I'm also doing some group coaching tonight within the Flying Free Sisterhood. And I'm also interviewing a survivor named Robin, who is going to be for a podcast episode. So I'm doing that this afternoon. And I can't wait to do that. Um, so here's the question that came in. Um, the question that came in is this, how do I handle my husband's criticisms and backhanded compliments? So this person is coming from the perspective of actually living with her. Some of the people on this page are no longer living with their abusive spouses. And, but many of you, maybe even most of you are still living with them. And so, and you're wondering, well, that's great for those of you who get to leave and you're out, but what about the rest of us who are still stuck living with these people? How do we manage the day-to-day -day life with these kinds of people? And so this is one of the things that I've been learning about lately and teaching to the people in my groups. And that is this. Everyone, think about, okay, and, and I got this concept because one day I was taking a walk and I was thinking about the universe, like the universe, like way out there, you know, there's... There's even like the Milky Way, which is just our galaxy, is just one of hundreds of thousands of galaxies. It's, it's just mind blowing. I mean, how do you even comprehend that? Okay, so there's the universe out there. And then you think about the universe that is in a single cell, like a single brain cell or a single amoeba or a single whatever. There's a universe in a cell. So I was thinking about this, how God created this world is he made it like super big, 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 big to infinity and then tiny, 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 tiny to infinity. Okay. And then I started thinking about my brain <laughs> and I realized there is an entire universe inside our head and that somehow unlocked some, that analogy unlocked a lot of things for me. And I started thinking in terms of, well, if I've got a universe between my ears, that means that you have a universe between your ears. And that would explain why so many people have a hard time understanding where someone else is coming from. Because my universe is made up of all kinds of synapses and memories and experiences based on my time in history, my the color of my skin, where I grew up, um, what how I was treated as a child, the kinds of parents that I had or didn't have, um, the kinds of experiences that I you know where I went to school, who I ran, who my friends were, the kinds of books that I read. My, where I went to college if I went, my education, all, all of that, okay, just on and on and on. And obviously, that is a very vastly different what's going on in my head between what's going on in, some, in just one other person's universe. That is profound. And, but here's, so here's what happens. When you think about living with your spouse, your husband, he's, he's critical and he's got these backhanded comments, what I believe is happening as I look back on my own prior relationship with my ex-husband is that our universes, or I believed, I think because I was a woman of faith, I believed that we were one flesh, right? And so I believed that that meant that our brains were fused together. Now, would I have said that? No. But I mean, just follow along with me here. We have, he had his own universe. I had my own universe, and by the way, we all have our own rule books for our own universe too, right? But I, but we were fused together in this symbiotic, unhealthy kind of relationship, okay? So when he would say, so think about this, when your spouse says something negative about you, what do you do? If you have your own universe and you are differentiated from your spouse, they can say something negative about you and it will be like, words floating in the air. Okay, so he said that thing about me. It doesn't matter because I'm not, who I am is totally and completely separate from who he is. 
Okay. And so I don't have to react. I don't have to feel shame. I don't have to. Okay. So now I'm explaining this. This is easier to explain than it is to actually experience. In fact, to be able to separate yourself, um, even if you're living with them, even when you're not living with them. Okay. I talk to women all the time who are divorced and out and they are still in this relationship with their ex-husband. All right. I still feel like I'm unworking threads of my stuckness with my ex-husband, okay? And I feel like my goal someday, I hope, that I will be able to, he will be able to say and do anything and I will no longer, I will just com be completely neutral about it, because, at least as far as my personal relationship with him goes, because I will just have absolutely no, I'll have zero connection whatsoever, my main upsetness with my ex is just maybe what he does with my kids. You know, my kids will come home and they'll say things. So that's a whole other thing. But let's go back to the criticisms, okay? So if you're getting a criticism, what you need to do is start seeing your... You need to get your own work really, really hard on figuring out who you are separate from your husband. Because right now you're looking at yourself through his eyes, through his lens, through his universe, okay? And that's not who you are. You've got your own universe. And you're expecting, uh, here's the weird, really crazy thing about it. You're looking at him and you're thinking of him in terms of your universe, but you're thinking of you in terms of his universe. Is that not crazy or what? So what I mean by that is, you're projecting all of your goodwill and the, the, you know, well, I would never do that. So therefore he would never do that. Right? Well, I would never mean that if I said that. So therefore he must not mean that when he says that we're projecting all of that onto his universe, but all the bad things that he says about you, you're actually taking that on and believing that it must be true. So right now, if my ex called me, uh, the B word, which he wouldn't cause he wasn't the kind of person who swore. But let's just say he called me a, let's say he called me the C word. Okay. I would be annoyed maybe, but I wouldn't f really have that inner feeling of, Oh my gosh, I, I wouldn't have any shame whatsoever. Be Sorry, I got a phone call there. How I view myself now is so, so opposite of how he views me. And it's to the point where it's like, that's interesting. Like, I wonder who you, who, who are you talking about? Cause it's, it couldn't possibly be me. Right. And you want to get to that place where you actually think those kinds of thoughts. So that means you have to reprogram your brain. Cause right now your brain has the program that was downloaded into it by your abuser or by your, maybe your parents or your peers or whoever it was that you hung out with growing up your church. That's the program that's in your brain now. So your brain is running on automatic on that program. And so the way to get yourself unstuck from that is to interrupt the program and to offer yourself new thoughts about who you are and what your identity is. All right. So think about your husband as he's saying criti critical things. He's making these backhanded comments and think of them as words that are just floating around in the space. And you can either grab them and implement them into your psyche, or you can just let them float away. Again, it's easier said than done, but that's what you want to get to the point where you can do that. So how you're going to feel about the things that he says depends on what you make those words mean for you. All right. If you have a core belief that says that the things you're, that, that believes the things that your husband says, or that you deserve the ways that he treats you, if that's your core belief, then you're going to make those words that he says mean that he is smart and wise to know you so well, right? And that you are indeed all the bad things that he says you are, all right? You will let, you will allow him to identify you and to create your identity. Who you are in his universe is who you will believe that you truly are. And it's so not it's not even close to who you really are. Okay. Nobody, nobody else, nobody else's universe can define who you are. Nobody's not even your mother's who he held you in her bosom 
and raised you as her very, very own. Not even she is aware of what your universe is really like, okay? So, um, let's see, I, just, I have some notes written down here. Oh, the other thing to keep in mind, especially because we're women of faith, is that God gets to define us, right? Who better to define who we are than the one who actually created us? So what if our mother bore her in her womb? God cre God's the one who formed us in her womb. God's the one who created what, us with purpose and meaning and dignity and destiny. God is. His opinion of us is so much more important than anybody else's opinion of us, including our own opinions. If you, um, one of the resources that I'm going to be recommending in that ch children's resource page is all of the Wemmick books by Max Lucado. And all you have to do is go to Amazon and look up Wemmick books by Max Lucado. He, that is, those books are so profound, even for those of us who are adults, to understand that we p human beings are really kind of like a bunch of wooden puppets walking around. I mean, not puppets, because we're not, God doesn't, you, and, and it's not portrayed like that in the books, but we're like these wooden creation creations that the 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 master creator created and he's the one who decides how important those those little wooden creations are okay he's just he's the one who decides but those little wooden people they're always putting dots on each other if they don't like someone or they're putting stars on each other if they do like that person um, and then everyone gets their identity based on how many stars or dots they have. We do that here on Facebook too, don't we? If someone gives us lots of likes and we've got lots of hearts, then we feel like we're a worthwhile person. And if someone is, if we're just being ignored and or people are saying hateful things to us, then we feel like we're not a worthful, worthwhile person. And the point is, is that other people shouldn't, we, we, we have to get to the place where other people, do, and trust me, I struggle with this too, okay? I'm not, I've definitely not arrived. But we have to get ourselves to the place where other people and how they're identifying us and how they are um, defining us is completely irrelevant. We are always, just like Jesus Christ was always true to who he was, we are always true to who we are and we are always strong in our identity. All right, so the solution then to dealing with criticism is to get yourself unmeshed from your spouse or from anybody else who is criticizing you and to figure out what's going on inside of your own brain because the thoughts that you're thinking are the things that are are the is the downloaded program and those thoughts are causing you to feel all of that shame when someone else defines you in the way that they want to define you okay so that's all i have for you today until next monday fly free